Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 36. This is a jitter tutorial on getting started with sound using the spigot object. So let's get a new patcher up here. Um, before we start with this, we want to make a patcher that we can use over the next couple of tutorials that works for some of the things that we're going to be doing so we don't have to spend too much time doing it. So let's get a new object up here and call it uh, JIT dot QT uh, dot M. There we go. JIT dot QT dot movie. Great. That's what we want. And what we're going to do is make a menu to play things through there. So uh, the first thing we need to do when we send it information is to make a new object, type the letter N, and this one is prepend. You can probably guess that it will be read, R-E-A-D, and connect that to your jitter object. Once you read the movie, you're going to want to be able to play the movie, so let's get another new object. and Just type play bar. There it is. Hmm, what a funny size. And we'll resize that. And they're not really connected, it just looks that way. Um, connect this to the movie so that we'll be able to play it. This, I'm going to reroute this around it. Great. And what is it that we're prepending? It will be, type the letter N, the U menu. Great. So, now here's one thing that is an often made mistake, so let's take a look at it. This will spit out a number when you choose your menu item. That's useful sometimes, but not for us today. What we want it to do is spit out a movie name, and so we want a message. That's the middle outlet, and connect that to prepend, and then that will go down to the JIT QT movie. But first, we have to click on the U menu, click on the inspector, and scroll down to, let's get a zoom in on this here. We want it to auto-populate. We don't really care about the file types. We do, but we know that all these things are in a folder somewhere. So what we really want is the folder. We want it to choose a folder. And uh, just zoom out so we can look at this. Um, of course, I was already playing with this. So I should tell you that you go to your Applications folder. Then you click on Max. Under Max, you'll find packages inside of packages wow how strange packages patches media sorry not not packages patches then you go to media and you select media because that has all of the movies that we know uh, come with Max in it. So, zooming back out, we now have almost enough things here to play a movie. The thing that we're missing is a P window. So, JIT dot P, W, there it is, and we'll line that up here, and play a movie. Make sure it works. The first step. There we go. Okay. Lock your patcher. Select a movie. Let's, um, let's do countdown, just for fun. Okay, there it is. Starts playing automatically. And three, two, one, zero, ten, nine, eight. We know how it goes. Okay. Um, I wanted to review something very quickly before we move on from here. And that is that the jitter objects can get a fairly large number 
of um, arguments sent sent to them. Uh, unlock your pattern, just click on this, and then go over and click on reference. And you'll see that these attributes in this column um, and you can click on here and you, then you can see lots of them. All of these attributes can be included inside the jit.qt.movie object. So if we wanted um, to change the movie rate, we could do it. If we wanted to change the name of the spigot object, spigot object, um, this is how we would do it. And that is how we're going to do it. Um, but let's just um, do one other thing first, which I wanted to show you, which is um, to show that anything that's in there um, can actually just be sent in as a message. So let's look at loop. Loop down here at the bottom. Zero is no looping. One is normal looping, which is what our movie had been doing before it was going from 10 to 0 and then looping. And then palindrome, it goes from the beginning to the end and then it goes from the end to the beginning. So we're going to change it from normal looping to palindrome looping in two different ways. One, we're going to send it... Uh, uh, actually, we'll do it both ways at the same time. So here, we'll just zoom out and we'll send it a message, which is message, and just type loop space one. That's normal looping. And then do it again, another message, message loop space two. Okay. So we'll connect that one there and connect that one there. This is just for demonstrational purposes, of course and we will play our movie. Four, three, two, one, ten. Okay, so that's the loop one mode, and now we're just going to st stick it on loop two. Four, three, two, one. Ooh, backwards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can tell I just can't. I'm too impatient. And then back down it goes. And then if we go back to loop one, then we can be assured that it'll just get to the bottom and go back to 10 and start over again. Okay, so that is one way to do it. But if you want your movie to always be a palindrome movie, you could go in here to your jitter QT movie object and after movie type space and say at loop two. Okay, so at loop means my initial message is going to be loop two. Okay, we'll click outside there. You notice this thing's all reset now. It's as though it's never read a movie. So now we have to tell it to read the movie again. So we'll come down here and select the countdown movie and it starts playing as you see, we haven't selected anything, and we're assuming that it is going to bounce back and go the other way. So that's how you use these things, and you can use them for practically anything, as long as it's a message that's over here, an attribute message that you could send to it. Okay? So, um, knowing that, we may want to do a couple things. For example, we want to make sure that the movie plays at full volume. So let's go look at our attributes here and I'm trying to zoom but uh, I can't. There we go. At volume, movie sound volume. If we click on it um, aye, aye, aye. come on, come on. Movie sound volume, but it doesn't give any uh, numbers. I happen to know that it's between 0 and 1 for jitter objects, so let's zoom out and we'll 
uh, unlock our patcher. Oops, click in our patcher and then unlock. Click in the patcher, unlock the patcher, and then we'll change this to um, at VOL space. Well, let's experiment and say at volume zero. Zero. Okay. And then we'll um, lock our patcher. Actually, let's leave it unlocked for a second and change one of these to VOL. Whoops. VOL one. And well, I guess I'll just change the other one to VOL zero. Okay. Now we need a movie with sound, and I know the basketball movie has sound, so let's go with that. Oh, I can't hear anything, which is not surprising because we put in the at volume zero. So when it starts, it's at volume zero. And I'm going to send it the message volume one. So that's full volume. And now we'll just hit volume zero again. And we've killed the volume. So one of the things we want to make sure of when we start up our JIT movie object is that the volume is up at one because we're going to want to output that volume. And then we have to send it somewhere, which, as you may recall, is SOC. So unlock, click in your patcher and unlock it. You can even, and we're going to put at volume one and then space at SOC. And now we have to, that which um, comes up here, I'm going to try to, at SOC, name of spigot object associated with this movie. So all we have to do is name our SOC and today it is going to be named um, today it is going to be named am I in here? Is my little thing okay it is going to be named uh, 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 I used Harvey before I'm afraid to use it now Sam there we go at sock Sam or uh, how about sock monkey there it's sock monkey uh, I know it's destructive way to remember it okay so now when this movie starts it's going to send the volume out to a spigot named it's going to send at full volume volume one it's going to send it to sock monkey great so far so good um, let's move over here and now we need to make that object so type letter n type spigot there it is, and type monkey exactly the same, including the capitals, as um, as is over there. And then we know that if we put an audio thingamajig here, we will be able to hear it. Oops. So. We're going to re... Um, there's another movie with uh, sound. I believe it's Crash Test. Crash Test. And... Oh, I, I forgot. You remember this? We have to click on this and get the sound. <laughs> So that is how you get the sound to come out of your JIT movie, and now you can do whatever you want with that sound, redirecting it. And I'm just going to show you one quick thing before we get out of here, which is a reminder. You can always make this loop. Whoops. You get that feeling that the movie is still playing, or the sound, oh, the sound is still playing. And 
this one too. Uh, loop two. So now we can listen to the sound backwards if we want to. Here's loop, here's loop two. This is a case where the sound actually sounds the same going backwards as forward. That's what you get for electronic music. Well, anyway, I'm going to turn that down. So, that is how to get the MSP sound out of your QuickTime movie, and we will return to more with the sound in the next video. Thanks for watching.